I think there's been a growing realization over the last few years um, that uh, looking at growth as we traditionally looked at it, measured by GDP, is not actually a very good way of looking at our material well-being, uh, let alone other forms of well-being, uh, in terms of our society. Uh, that's not a new thought, actually. The founding fathers of national accounting were always very clear, people like Samuelson and Kuznets, that this was not a way of measuring uh, our well-being. It was only part of the story. And there's at least two ways, actually, in which the story is deficient if you just look at GDP. Uh, the one is, it doesn't take account of the environment. Uh, there's not much point having lots of money, lots of real resources, if actually the air uh, you breathe is almost unbreathable and for that matter you're short of uh, clean water or whatever. So the environment itself is an important part of our well-being, has to be taken into account. And then secondly, um, sustainability. Uh, it's one thing to be uh, doing okay now, to have um, uh, our well-being now, uh, but is that going to be sustained? Are we actually using up resources in an unsustainable way, which means that we won't be able to maintain that, that well-being over time? Important for us in the future, even more important for our children, our grandchildren. And that's all the more important, actually, in a society where we have an ageing population. Uh, so we've, we've got an uphill battle there, that's something we have to take into account. We can take that into account, important though we do so. If we're going to make a success of the green growth agenda, there's at least two indispensable ingredients. Uh, the one, if you like, is political will. It's not just politicians actually, it's decision makers in the public sector, decision makers in, in the private sector, uh, being persuaded of why this is an important issue and actually then persuading others that this is an important issue, that our decisions ought to reflect these green growth considerations. Now that's one thing, but actually there's no point being persuaded that this is the right thing to do, You've sort of, you're convinced, uh, but actually you then have to be able to take the right decisions, uh, things that are actually going to take us forward in this green growth agenda, rather than otherwise. So that for me is why the knowledge generation is important how the, the Green uh, Growth Knowledge Platform can help in that respect. Now, there's an awful lot of work going on in the world uh, which should help us take this forward, make us, give us the knowledge, the know-how to make the good decisions rather than the bad ones. Some of that is what you might call analytic, academic work, lots of that going on, that's important. At least as important though is the fact that there are all sorts of initiatives around the world, around the globe, um, they're almost laboratory experiments for us. Uh, they show us what works, they also show us what, don't, what doesn't work. So it seems to me that part of this knowledge uh, transfer, this knowledge sharing, should be about learning those lessons. What works, that will maybe replicate elsewhere. What doesn't work, don't do that elsewhere. Uh, let's not keep reinventing wheels and let's, certainly let's not keep reinventing square wheels. And then, finally, this kind of um, this knowledge uh, generation, this knowledge sharing, then feeds back, it seems to me, to the political will side of the equation. Because actually, that then gives uh, the decision makers the ammunition to be able to persuade themselves, to persuade others that this is a really important agenda. So that's why I see GGKP as being absolutely essential. It gives us the know-how, it helps us give us the political will, and that's the way I think the agenda will get taken forward successfully.